Good evening. I'd like to call the Alton Board of Selectmen's meeting to order March 2nd, 2020 at 6 p.m. Please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I'm going to have a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The town clerk's tax collector's office will be closed Tuesday, March 10th for school, town and school elections, which will be held at St. Catherine Drexel Church, lower level, Hidden Springs Road from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. There is a six-ton weight limit on all roads within the town until further notice. Please contact the highway department if you have any questions or concern. At this time, I have one more announcement, and the employees do too. Board of Selectmen, please stand. Uh, with Sydney. Sydney, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, the townspeople, the town of Alton, I'd like to present you with nine years of community service and then some with the Alton School Board at the same time. Thank you for your service and commitment to the taxpayers of our community. Thank you so much. Oh. <laughs> Sydney, this is from all of the town employees, and they wanted to thank you so much for everything you have done for them over the years. Thank you. Okay, at this time, I'd like to recess this Board of Selectmen's regular meeting and go into a public hearing. I have a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tonight's public hearing is on a proposed water rate increase. I'll ask the water superintendent come up forward first to, to explain the water increase to the public. And after that, uh, the selectmen will have a chance to discuss and we'll open it up to the public. Yes. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Courtney Mitchell, the superintendent of the Water Department. Um, I'd like to first say that um, I want to thank everyone for coming to give your input on the proposed rate increase. Um, as a department, we continue to do everything we can to keep the cost down and to operate efficiently um, while providing all of our customers with a safe and re reliable supply of drinking water. With that being said, water rates need to be set properly to balance the impact on the customers while also allowing us to, um, to work and create sufficient revenues to meet operating and maintenance expenses and to make the necessary investments in our needed um, aging infrastructure. Here in Alton, we're a town department. We're not for profit. If we need to increase our rates, the money we're looking to recover goes 100% into our operating and maintenance costs. Our goal with the rate increase is to keep it as minimal as possible and to recover the rates that we need to maintain a successful operating system as well as provide funds for unplanned or accelerated infrastructure replacements. We take pride in ensuring that our services meet the need of the customers. Investment in water infrastructure is critical to support the communities today and into the future. I think when you read in the newspapers or you hear on the news that infrastructure is the, the key word, um, Flint, Michigan, other areas, um, PFAs in the news, um, infrastructure is starting to get to that age where it's, it's needing money put into it to sustain. <clears throat> We're committed to being good stewards of our water resources and Investment in the infrastructure is critical for all of our health, mine included, I'm a water user, 
um, the prosperity and the quality of life. We can't live without water. <clears throat> My goal as a department head is to have a pro proactive water main replacement program. And this will evaluate the age and condition of the leaks in order to assess the most cost-effective time replacement and rehabilitate the aging water mains. This year, from February to current, we have fixed 43 leaks. Um, <clears throat> that could be anything from a eight inch water main break to tightening, tightening a hose clamp. Um, regardless of such, each one inconveniences the customers and takes our time where we could be maintaining other things um, and not just making repairs to just get by week to week. <clears throat> Our job is to ensure that the water keeps flowing not only today, but 30 years from now, 100 years from now. And our water mains are now to the point where they're critical. <clears throat> Some of our water mains, pipes, and pumps are over 50 years old. And our goal for the proactive water main replacement will evaluate the age and condition and how many leaks that we've had in that section. Um, and it'll allow us to assess the most cost-effective time to replace or rehabilitate the water mains. <clears throat> My job as a superintendent, drinking water is probably one of the most um, regulated and controlled substances that anyone can ingest. Um, that's any food, drug, or beverage. We have to monitor over 100 contaminants and must meet close to 90 regulations for safety and quality which is far more than any bottled water company ever has to meet for regulations. So your monthly water bill pays for a lot more than just simply water. <clears throat> the, the rate structure that we're trying to um, implement is going to change the water rates from your basic $100 per 1,000 cubic feet to $110 per cu uh, 1,000 cubic feet. Um, and we're going to go from 10 cents per cubic foot over that 1,000 cubic feet to 12 cents. So roughly most, most average size homes will see a $92 increase a year. <clears throat> Our goal is to provide a detailed analysis of every water main and asset in the distribution system by scoring it based on the pipe material the importance to the distribution system, the recorded failures, fire flow cap capabilities, and the number of services. And upon completion, it's our goal to provide a narrative assessment of the water mains deemed to be the highest rate of risk in the system. <clears throat> With the new rate and structure this year, we're looking to crawl out of the reactive status where we are working on something and we get a call that someone has no water or they have a leak in their service line or water bubbling up from Route 11 and move towards that proactive status where we can take care of where our water quality complaints come from, our taste and odors, dirty water, um, low flows, and put that as a priority to, to bring it up to where it should be. Um, so with being proactive, my goal for the 2020 year is to make the department financially whole again and build the capital reserve to fund the needs of the aging in infrastructure before catastrophic losses occur. Um, I'm sure you have plenty of questions, so I will open the floor for anybody who might like We'll have the selectmen ask you any questions okay. first. Yep. Why, why aren't we putting an increase on the summer? Because the summer lines have not been completely figured out as to what they're using um, based on, on the meter reads. You still should have taken an increase because summer pays a certain amount. They should have been increased so that the people that live here year round ain't paying the whole, flipping the whole bill for the water system. I mean, I think the summer line should have got some type of increase. But didn't the water summer they, users just get an increase two years ago? Yes. Or yeah. what, $400, wasn't it? They went up $100. Dollars. Yeah. Does this also include um, upgrading or continuing to put in new meters in homes that don't have any? Yes. This yep. is all part of the part of the program to continue. There was something like 60 or so? There's 68 homes that are unmetered right now. Okay, so that's all part of it. As well as other meters that are being found to be past their 10-year life expectancy, so they're not reading 
um, what they what they should be doing. So in terms of the department, most most times the customer is at the, the winning part of the meter slowing down. They they never speed up. So um, we should see um, with the replacement of the water meters a more detailed analysis as to what people are really using. <clears throat> Bill, anything? We already have the water meters, right? We have to wait until the um, budget, budget passes. In the budget, in their budget, they have a line item for water meters. Okay. Yep. So many a year, they have a program. So many a year. Okay. Yep. Sydney. No questions. Okay. I don't. I'll open up the floor at this time if you direct your questions to Courtney Mitchell if you have any questions on the rate increase. Sizes? Yes, we did. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, uh, Bob Holt. Anyway, I was just curious when was the last increase? 2015. 2015? Yes. So it was about five years ago? Yep. And could you, I couldn't really get the exact figure. You went from 100? Yep. So the base rate right now is $100 minimum per 1,000 cubic feet. Yep. We're going to go to 110 okay. per 1,000 cubic feet. Right. I had that right. Yep. And you said the average cost increase is going to be 93000 uh, three dollars a year approximately yeah so we have a, a, a block rates structure so basically the more you use the more you pay um, so we're basing this off of an average four person home um, and take we took a collection of what they have been paying per year and it would roughly be about ninety two dollars a year increase Based and that's that a quarterly is out to be about 73 cents a day yeah <clears throat> and I'm just a uh, little curious about how this has all taken place. Did have the selectmen do the selectmen work closely with the water department now? I, I feel we do. We stay in contact with Courtney. She stays in contact with us whenever she has a water leak or major break. She contacts all of us, lets the town administrator know. It does go out to all of us where the breaks are. Um, <coughs> During different times when they'd fix one leak down, say, in the bay, I think it was a year ago, they'd fix one leak, they had to go down 30 feet and fix up another leak. She kept us surprised at everything that was going on. So as far as the revenues, we do see that as those are coming in, how the revenues are staying the way they should be. So it's, it's running a lot more, my feeling, sitting as a past water commissioner and sitting there two years ago, is running much more efficient than what it, than what it had been doing. Yes, I can agree with that 100%, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions or comments about the water rates? Yes, sir. Uh, Lauren Kaff, you say you're going to try to um, have a uh, trust to build up some money. How much do you think, uh, have you got any estimates of how much money uh, you would be putting in for the future? So the, how much we put in for the future depends on what we spend for the year. Um, I think this year we put about $46,000 into um, our revenue account. Our revenue account. Right now, as of last week, the revenue account stood at $431,000. Okay. And this will, this will increase, a, a base increase. Now, how I did this was based on everyone using the minimum. Okay, this isn't if, you know... One house uses 2,000 cubic feet. Yep. Um, I based it just on the minimum. This will give us a base increase of about $18,000 per quarter. Okay, 18, base. 18000 a quarter. Yeah, over what we have been collecting currently. An increase of 18000 Yes. Okay, okay. And have you ever considered tying this into inflation? We have not yet at this point, no. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Yes. Kelly Sullivan, Main Street. Um, no questions, rather a comment that I agree with um, 
the chairman that I see a great increase in communication and appreciate your work and efforts to bring the water system up to speed, so to speak. Um, I do know that it's in, you know, dire straits, we'll say, um, but I feel that your communication has been much better than anybody previous, and I appreciate, appreciate the that. work you've put into it. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? Okay, at this time, I will, Mr. Holt. Yes, sir. How does the, how, how do our water rates compare with any surrounding towns? Are we in the ballpark, especially with this new rate? Yeah, so other towns do different structures. Um, some towns have a, a meter charge each month. Um, you know, you're going to have some towns that do monthly, some towns that do quarterly billing. Um, <coughs> Meredith, an average family of four, is $150 a quarter. Um, of course, they have sewer, so they're looking at about combined $300 a quarter. Um, Wolfboro, they do their units a little bit differently. Um, they have $20.40 a unit per 100 cubic feet, so they do it a little bit differently. So it's, it, you know, rates are kind of all over the place. Farmington, the average bill is $140 a quarter. Um, they're also water and sewer, but the water bill alone is $140 a quarter. Um, Keene is $126.79 a quarter average. Um, Pittsfield Aqueduct, they have a $24.49 a month standard charge for the meter, um, kind of like your, your public service rates where you'll have a, a service charge and then what you use. Um, and they do $6.48 cents per 100 cubic feet a month so you're looking at like a, a $300 a month a $300 a quarter water bill so we're right in the middle um, a lot of these towns are a little bit more established with their rates but they also look at them every year um, going from 2015 to 2020 and just doing a rate increase sometimes you're you're more apt to see more of a jump instead of looking at your rate structure every year and see how things are changing, chemical costs, breaks, infrastructure. Um, the rates should be at least looked at and, and, and run through each year. Um, and that way you can keep your, your rates slower increases um, instead of, you know, huge wax every five years or so. Um, but I'm pretty confident to say that we're, we're right in the, in the ballpark of where we need to be. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? Okay, being done, I'll close the public hearing at this time. Does the Board of Selectmen have any other questions for? Nope. Okay, so I do need a motion to approve the new water rate. I think motion we approve the water rate as proposed. Second. All right. Discussion would be when do you want, when are you looking to in, um, institute the new rate we probably do quarter quarter two first spilling. quarter yeah okay. so the motion will be that the new rates will start this quarter when they go out and read the meters in first of april yes right yep. any other discussion all those in favor aye aye thank you very much thank you, thank you. <clears throat> at this time i'd like to open up the floor to public input uh, it's limited to three minutes per person on agenda items only. Raymond Howard, Stockbridge Economer. I see free higher education is on the agenda again tonight. Um, I know this is something that's been discussed, but I'd just like to say that at a $40,000 price tag, this probably should be a special warrant article and let the voters decide. Uh, a degree is something that, you know, you acquire uh, in your own personal investment so you can negotiate a higher pay scale in your job placement. Uh, from what I understand, this degree is not required for the current job that the employee is at. 
And I know there's been some comments made about, you know, signing on for a period of time to compensate the town for the expense. But what happens if the person screws up and loses their certification? Uh, who's on the hook for that? That has happened in this town before. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further public input? On? John Marklin. Uh, before I get timed, Mr. Chairman, if you just allow me the moment. Uh, Sydney, I want to personally thank you for serving with you on the board and your insight and your wisdom through those years that I served with you. I greatly appreciate and admire the service you provided to the town all those years. So uh, I just want to thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, good evening and thank you for allowing me an opportunity to speak about the board's discussion regarding educational training for our school resource officer. Before deciding to grant this training, I hope the board has researched the following. The memorandum of understanding between the Alton School District and the Alton Police Department as to the expectations of the school resource officer's role. The Alton Police Department's job description of the school resource officer. The understanding of the role of the guidance counselors in the school system and their role in understanding and interviewing of troubled children. An in-depth look into the Granite State Children's Alliance in which the Lakes Region area has an office in Laconia called the Greater Lakes Child Advocacy Center that provides area police departments trained forensic interviewers as part of a multidisciplinary team to include law enforcement, trained forensic interviewers, family support specialists, and mental health clinicians, all of who work in a collaborative effort in interviewing children as a team in a specialized room that provides higher results of child particip participation. Having had experience in dealing with juvenile issues, it is imperative that every effort is taken to provide the family and child with all due legal proceedings through an investigation to avoid any liability and or accusations that may occur. Thus why the CAC developed the multidisciplinary team. The Child Advocacy Center also provides law enforcement training with issues dealing with children. While I believe every step should be taken to protect our children, the board is also a steward to the taxpayers in this community to ensure we are not paying for a duplication of services we are already paying for. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome. Thank you. Any other public input at this time? Seeing none, I'll close public input. We do have an appointment, folks, with John. Robinius Adams, approval to build on a Class 6 portion of Reed Road. Welcome, sir. Hello. You can just pronounce your name for the... Robitis. Minutes. Robitis. Robitis okay. Adams. Sorry about that. Someone is here to build on a part of this Class 6 road. The Alton Planning Board approved it. Highway Department approved it. The Fire Department approved. And the Police Department approved It's all relevant parties have weighed in and no one has an issue with it no I, the forestry department fixed this road all the way up and that's the trail that goes over to mount major up in there mm -hmm. they put a parking lot and stuff so they've done a lot of work to the right to the and it's notated in here that the proposed driveway is almost directly across from that parking lot so it's a heavily traveled yeah <coughs> as it is yeah that's um, why the plan <coughs> really have a problem with it right I mean, he's gone through all of the steps. He's he's followed everything. Town attorney doesn't have an issue with it. None of the department heads have an issue with it. I would say we let this gentleman go home. I recommend we approve the request. Second. So motion include the so long as he signs the releases and gets recorded yes. with the state. Yes. Okay. We have a second. A motion. A second. In discussion. The only thing. You did come up and sit at the table. If there's anything you'd like to add to it, no, I mean that just that pretty much covers it. Okay. Motion made, and there's no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, that's in the that's in your motion to the uh, to sign the waiver. Sign, sign the waiver. So stuff. long as he signs and release okay. and gets the recorded with the state as follows. <laughs> yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you, board you. members. Thank you. And happy building. <coughs> <clears throat> uh, 
New Business Planning Department requests to establish Facebook page. Jessica, if you come join us. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> uh, so tonight I would like to propose that the planning department have their own Facebook page. Um, I have some, done some research. There are five other town entities that already have a page. Uh, they're like police, fire, park and rec, uh, water department, and the conservation commission. Uh, so my initial thoughts of creating a page, um, I wanted to be able to, one, sort of promote the department, um, give a way to sort of explain what we do, who we are, um, why would you go to the planning department. Um, I talked to my secretary, Amelia, to get some input from her and what she thought would be sort of something good to put on the page. And she thought of... Um, like a tip of the week or maybe a tip of the month, you know, pick a, a specific topic, um, be able to really explain some things in layman's terms, um, you know, help residents if they have questions on stuff, um, be able to um, give them the opportunity to call the office, email the office if they have questions on anything that they see posted. Um, it would be a page set up just for information only. Like, I don't want people to be able to well, don't we have comment. a town website? We do have a town website. Um, so to go f further that, to, to answer that, um, so I'm part of some of the Alton community pages, just to kind of see, you know, what uh, residents are up to, things like that, just to maybe, you know, give me some ideas. Um, I've seen a lot of comments just sort of recently about the zoning amendments. Um, and a vote on? Yes, yes, the ones we're gonna vote on next week. Um, and some of them haven't really been in a great light. Um, I've seen some negative comments, um, some things that sort of some misinformation. And I feel like searching through websites, kind of like old school, we kind of did that back in the 90s. And I think nowadays a lot of people search on social media, you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, you know, other things like that. And I think, I, I think it's, I think it's a good opportunity to get information out there. Well, that's what the town website's for, is for the town information, to put the town information out there. I mean, are we going to end up in a, um, he said, she said, war on the computer? No, absolutely no. not. Answering their questions? And no, it would just be set up. Um, it would just be set up to have the admins, so it would just be the planning department staff. And it would just be a place to post information and encourage the residents to call if they have questions on anything, you know, anything posted. I think, I think last year when we... When we when we came out with the zoning amendments and we kind of mentioned, geez, maybe we should have some sort of explanations on things to make it a little easier for the residents to understand you know, <coughs> what we were proposing. And this year we kind of didn't really do that. And I, th I think it's important to be able to clarify a lot of things in, in a format that a lot of people nowadays are already on. I don't know if you're familiar with Facebook, but when you sit on Facebook and you are looking at your news feed, places and pages that you sign up for to, that you want to join, like sort of pop up on your page when those particular pages post new information. So it's, it's easily accessible and it, it's up to you to decide whether you think it's a good idea or not. I'd, has I a, think it is. Has a <laughs> so Virgil, I just wanted to point out to you that this would be similar, very similar to what other departments are doing and probably a little more st uh, strict than what other departments are doing on Facebook. As an example, the police department will put a press release on their Facebook page and it goes out to everybody 
um, and that's what she would be doing. She would po be posting information and explanations. Um, we can certainly put information on our website, but more people will read this on Facebook than those going to the town's website. Um, and so she would be outputting information only rather than inputting information. Um, in fact, all of the departments that have Facebook pages do this. Um, some of them have listed cancellations of classes. The library has posted things on their Facebook page of events that they're having at the library. It's all, it's all pretty positive. I can just jump in to kind of add to that. The last two weeks, I've had quite a few people stop at the store. There's some articles on there that have to do with lumber yards. Um, one gentleman came and saw me yesterday and he says, what's this you're trying to do for your lumber yard? And I said, I'm not trying to do anything. So I go into the coffee shop in the morning, you got 10 guys standing around the coffee shop and they all have solved the town's problems. Yes. And that's the way Facebook is. Um, I had sent a lot of folks down to yeah, Jessica's office to explain the ordinances that are going to be voted on. I had several customers come to me and say, what do you mean we can't cut firewood in our own yard anymore? And that's not what the article is, but it's the way they're interpreting it. Then it gets on Facebook and it just goes everywhere. I mean, you have other people from other towns commenting on it. But I, I think it's a good idea because then she herself could put on there the true definition of what these Correct. learning on size that are being voted on. A lot of folks, folks won't go to the public hearings. They won't go to the meetings. They won't even go in to see her. Why? I don't know because I said that to several people and she told me this night so no one's been in the see her. Because I'd rather gripe about it. Well, that's like going to the coffee shop in the morning, standing down in the circle and talking about it. This would be a good way where she can also defend herself. She's not going to get in correspondence back and forth. She's just going to put it out right. there. And she could say, well, I've heard some concerns about this zoning ordinance. She could put it, let me lay a rest that there's no such things. You'll be able to cut your firewood. Um, this just has to do with commercial operations. I think it's a good idea. My store's on Facebook, but I do never go on it. My manager goes on it and maintains it because I will not do social media myself personally. So, because I don't like what's said. Um, a lot of times that are in there because there's a it lot can of get out of hand. a lot of misstatements uh, can hurt a lot of people mm -hmm. um, but in this instance she's not going to be going back and forth with folks she's just putting information out there I think it's a good idea I definitely agree uh, I think it's a good idea to get out there a lot of people getting their information more and more on social media um, you can uh, definitely relate to them and answer questions of concerns a little bit quicker than them some of them don't even check the website or, or even come in here so it's a, they're used to that that Facebook at their fingertips and they can check what the fire department's doing the police department and they can right. they can go right down the list and check on everything um, and again you're just making comments of what uh, you want to say and tell the people you're not getting into a, um, an argument you know, that's not what it's for and that that's what Ruben's saying is that does happen uh, personally with people they go back and forth and things can get out of hand quickly but as long as it's used as a tool to be able to just put out the information of the questions that people <coughs> have, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I think it further explains things to the public. Because mm -hmm. very often they're in the dark about it and don't understand it. Right, exactly. So, I mean, I have a motion to that effect to allow it to go <coughs> ahead and participate with the Facebook page. I, I make a motion uh, to. Um, allow uh, Jessica call uh, town planner to uh, apply for the um, Facebook page account second second any further discussion all those in favor aye. aye thank you Jessica it's nice to see you at one of our meetings so change to talk to us yeah. number two parks and recreation commission snowmobile access to Jones field hi right, Kelly So received your letter, we read it. Um, I understand it. I, I'd heard some concerns of this. Me and Paul both did. So me and Paul took a walk down to look at the trail, and they've been using the trail as adequately. Question I had, did the Stonewheel Club put up the snow fence last year? I believe they did. That's my recollection. They said they didn't. They said they didn't? Yes, Mrs. Bergeron said it was not put up. It was not put up, but you're saying it was. I believe it was in my recollection. I remember seeing one at the bridge, but I didn't go down the whole field last year. I remember seeing one at the bridge as soon as they came off. They had to turn on. They would go into the snow fence. 
Did you contact the Stonewheel Club about putting the snow fence up? Yes, Mrs. Bergeron, I did. And the reason was it was too expensive? Yes. Okay. And she said there was no formal agreement. It was just suggest suggested um, signage and del delineating the trail. Do they typically come in past years and pick up the snowmobile fence so they can reuse it? That was what I thought had happened. I'm not sure if there was a miscommunication with what happened last year with what happened this year. But there's also an issue with the water, the water well. Um, so there shouldn't be any direct access um, to the well, which this trail but. would provide if it wasn't marked off with snow fencing or a rock. Well, the only place that we asked for snow fence in that meeting two, a well. year ago, well, no, it wasn't by the well. It was only for the ball field. Because, uh, because when they come down the trail, they come down, they follow a gully along. The right. well off the to well the is side. up here. Right. There's a gully. The road is here, so it goes out into the field. So the field's out here, and the wellhead's way back mm -hmm. here. So the snow fence only really protects, keeps them from going onto the, on the field. Right. So um, I went down. I saw it where, how it was marked. Um, I know as a property owner on mine, if I have electric fence up, I have to do a little bit better marking than what I saw down there. It was marked out for safety. Ain't the town well supposed to be fenced off or something? Well, well that wouldn't be their responsibility. We wouldn't make their responsibility. That's our responsibility. I mean, it's it's it be fencing it off. Well, we got to keep gates. I walked to, when I walked it out yeah, and luck. with Ruben, I mean, we walked all the way from all the way from the uh, watershed all the okay. way down to to the bridge. Um, it looked like no one had gone off off course off the trail. Uh, there was no markings of any kind on the field. Um, it was a lot to me. There was a lot of signage. Um, I can see where a uh, snow fence, if you needed it, to where the where the field is itself uh, to keep people from actually going out in there. But they did have the lines and the stakes and the signs saying right. keep off. And I couldn't see any indication after a fresh snow and it was snowmobiles actually using the trail while we were on it. And uh, everybody was heeding exactly what they should do and noticing that the, the trail is well away from the well where they come through. Right. I think there's a radius. Of, isn't there a ra radius of the well that needed to be? Yes, there is. Was it 200 feet? Yeah. Or? And we're, we're well within, they're well within that 200 okay. feet away from it. I think you'll find that, that most snowmobilers are, are very respectful of, of the trails. Um, they understand that this is a right that can be taken, you know, to right. use this town property. Um, it's been my experience that snowmobilers never want to see a, a, a trail close. They never want to have any access point taken away. And I, th I think if it's well marked and people are following it, um, then I, I don't see that we have a huge problem here. I understand the concern. Okay. Um, I can see it on both sides. I can see, you know, I don't, I don't know if the snowmobile club's membership has declined in recent years or if it's costing more to keep up the trails. I know um, snow has been an issue. Um, and I know we've put a lot of time, effort, and, and money into the fields. However, I think that if what they're doing this year is working, and we just continue to monitor and emphasize that I, I would hate to see us put an unnecessary burden on them. Okay. Bill? Yeah, after what you guys have observed, I, I agree with what Sydney's saying. I mean, there, there are signs out that says stay in trail or stay home. Uh, don't lose the trail. Uh, myself, the only thing, having horses and electric fence, that little string they do have going around there that's orange, might be something a little bit heavier could go around there because all it would take is a young kid to go through that and get decapitated. That's one thing at my house, I have to put up signs, electric fence, and I have to put up big enough signs so they see it because it would take off someone's neck if they ran through it and didn't see it. So that, that twine that's on it that they use to put the ribbons on. The, the town didn't do that. I know you did. Oh, okay. I, I think that's something okay. that the Snowmobile Club maybe I, I should address next year is something okay. a little more clear or maybe even a little heavier. Okay. Um, especially for young drivers. Okay. Uh, we've seen the accidents up north when they do some things inexperienced and everything. Unnecessary burden, if 
I mean, our agreement was that they were supposed to put up snow fence. I remember discussing that at our meeting. Um, I'd have to go back and get the exact minutes. But like I said, it did work. Nobody had gone out there. But I would say if we ever did see someone go out there, we go to the snowmobile club and say, this was the chance. Okay. Yep. Either put a snow fence up or you lose the trail. She said, go out there, you just close the trail. They'll come around. Well, that's all I have okay. at, the, at this point. So I, I would let's say see if we can keep it monitored and see how they're doing. We're coming to the end of the season now, so this trail should be getting closed. And I would hope that the snowmobile club, if the snow has gotten down that low, they would close that trail so nobody goes out into the ball field and, or on that trail and scuffs up the, the ledge pack and stuff that we put out there. Okay. Or if you feel at some point that it needs to be closed, then we should contact the snowmobile club and let them know that we're closing the trail at that point. Okay. Do you folks agree with that? Yes. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I have seen snow machine where they'll go dirt and snow, dirt and snow, and then tear things up. Yep. Anything else for Kelly? I have the next Kelly. item if you guys do as well. Parks and Recreation Commission Jonesfield Memorial Plaque. I remember Mr. Bagley. I don't remember Mr. Moulton, so enlighten me. Uh, so I remember Mr. Bagley as well. Um, but why wouldn't we add Jonathan's name to that that gave the equipment and all the time and all our time down there going to Tilton, getting that bridge, putting the dozer in there, dozing that field, putting the excavator in there, cleaning it? This was just something that was brought to the commission, so the commission reviewed the request, and this is their recommendation. There's a Mr. Moulton that would like to install an approximately 12 by 18 dedication plaque uh, to be placed at Jones Field. I think it should have Jonathan's name on it, too. And that was... He put a lot of money into it. Right. That was specifically for the little Fenway mm -hmm. idea. We did that whole complex down there. We went to Tilton and got the bridge and stuff and put that in originally. Right. So this is just bringing to your attention and also the commission just wanted to note of the buried under uh, underground electrical lines so um, thought needs to be put put into there with a good decision to say this is a good spot for it if it were to be approved and this mr moulton said that he would um, provide all the materials installation and maintenance of this plaque i just think it should involve if it putting people in there that put that pack in I think Jonathan's name should be on that okay but you understand it's for two separate things it's not putting the park in it's for turning the park into little Fenway turning the park into little Fenway is what we did when we built it right that and, was what and it was this is for. well it was built as the Alton Little League and then it went to Alton Youth League and then it became little Fenway um, this individual before we put the bridge in we called it little Fenway okay um, but but this individual is asking specifically for for two people that are his family members I would wholeheartedly support if if you wanted to also put a, a plaque down there for everything that the Downings have done to um, that's the whole reason we got the field was from the Downings and right. the memory and the, of and Jones, Jones. Right. Downing Jones absolutely um, and I thought that's where that was carried through. The Joneses family mm -hmm. had that down there from Downing Jones and them. But why right. would we commemorate the pack to somebody else and say, yeah, put your plaque there when this family put a lot of money and a lot of time? I mean, we put a whole year's work down there. It was going back in history. It was Mr. Bagley that came forward for the town and developed the Alton Youth League and had the parades down there, went in. We got the youth league down there and got it going as a little Fenway. I, I think that's where this is coming from. From right. this gentleman is recognizing the two that started the whole movement of it. I thought it would only be appropriate to put everyone. If there's going to be a plaque, I mean, sure have everyone that was involved in the, the making the, of Jonesfield. Or yeah. Jonathan. Right. I don't know that you could find a plaque big enough to put everyone. <laughs> No, but I, mean, I, I dedicated five years of my life to that. <laughs> but Mr. Downing, <laughs> like, I think hours and hours and hours. But I think but. we've all donated. I mean, I donated a whole summer down there running the dozer and yeah. putting the bridge in and putting the cribs in. And I mean, I think we all donated, but Jonathan was the one that put the money up, put the equipment up mm -hmm. to get it done. And he was the one that pushed us all to do it. 
I think we got a little off track here. I would suggest the way it's sounding from the board, okay. maybe go back to the Parks Commission and see how they'd like to handle this and let Mr. Moulton know there was a little discussion on this. Okay. I have no problem with the plaque for Mr. Bagley. Mr. Moulton, I don't know enough about Mr. Bagley. I do, and I remember him coming here. I've been supporting it for over 25 years, sponsoring teams and plus donations. I don't need my name on the plaque. I didn't do it to have my name on the plaque. I, I did it basically because it was something for our community, something for our children. I have no problem with the plaque being as is, as that you guys are requesting it, but it's up to the rest of my board here. It's like Sydney said, I don't think we could have a plaque big enough. Okay. okay. I don't think the Parks and Recreation was requesting it. They were just supporting the request. Supporting it, bringing in. It's this gentleman's right. idea. I understand that, but okay. it's a request that now that's coming from Parks and Rec that you guys are supporting it. Okay. So I have no problem. I want to take a consensus through the board. Paul? I have no problem. Bill? No, no problem. I don't have a problem. I have a problem if they don't add the people that built the park in there. I have no problem. Mike, the consensus is fine with me, but like you said, it should know where it's going to go because the electrical conduit that's going to go there. So to me, nothing should happen until we know where that electrical conduit's going to be. Okay. They've ripping out all the other conduit? I think they're adding conduit and also to know where the plaque is going to go. And I think the Parks and Rec Commission should know where the plaque is going to go, kind of get that in detail, bring it back to us, and let us know where it's going to go so we okay. can all visualize where it's going to go but everybody else here has no problem with this i think you're wrong because you're dedicating a pack that <coughs> was built by other people well maybe she'll come back next month with that because it was also built with land water conservation funds so that's the town of alton as well so we'll, bring well it maybe back out to on you. your maybe <laughs> out on your face maybe out on your facebook page you can just kind of throw it out there okay See if there's any other folks that like to have a name added to a plaque. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to number four. Actually, we're going to keep you right up here. I think for the Millfoil. Millfoil special permit application, Solitude Lake Management. This is in our Warren article. We discussed it earlier at the meeting during the budget processing. This is for the permit for Solitude Lake Management, City Shrewsbury, Mass. And they've gone through all the permit process. We have to sign it and get it submitted. That's my understanding of this. Yes, all the so th this is the permit for the chemical treatment. And this is the same permit as last year, and it's they're requiring a signature. They were hoping to have it mailed out on Friday. It takes about it's 90 days to process. Make a motion we approve the special permit application for Solitude Lake Management and authorize the town administrator to sign. Second. <coughs> motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank okay, you, Kelly. Thank you. Number five, fire department, temporary garage for airboat. Chief, fire chief, I should say. <laughs> well, you're almost there, Ryan. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, as you know, the central station is kind of old. Storage is an issue. And we've been lucky enough to have this airboat that we can use for ice rescue. The problem is we have no place to really store it. It's got to be stored at least undercover. It's got a big 350 engine sitting on it that's just kind of, if it sits outside, it's just going to get wet and rusty. So it's been housed under a lean-to behind the West Alton Station, but that doesn't really put it in a good place <coughs> for deployment. Uh, the association actually proposed the idea that's, I sent you guys a picture. Um, it was their proposal, and they've offered to pay for most of it. At this point, um, they've paid for one shipping container, and the department paid for a second shipping container. Um, the idea is one of those is going to be used specifically to house training equipment, and the other one's going to be used to house some of our other equipment that has taken up a lot of space in the station. And then in between them will be a span where we can put that trailer 
and the association again has offered to pay to put a roof structure on my question to you is are you going to put a concrete slab down in the center there the only reason I ask that is to make it airtight and critter tight because two years ago we had all the problems with the mice and everything else getting in the engines and different things like that if we just put it on dirt and those shipping containers are there if we have another bad year with mice or even during any winter the mice could get an engine if it's not being pulled out on a regular basis right it is it is pulled out on a regular basis and started um, and here it's also going to be able to have a solar panel on top to keep the batteries charged the plan was to put a concrete pad in and that's going to kind of depend they have a certain amount of money they're willing to spend and how much money that roof structure is going to end up costing them all together that the fact that we're able to put it in in between after yep. will help us out um, if we can't afford it this year and I'm in agreement with that but I, I think at some point you're gonna have to find some way to make it critter proof yeah and right now this is like a temporary solution to a long-term problem I mean up to West Alton wasn't much better because that's open anyways that's I'm very open there to. yeah and it's quite a ways up to go get it <clears throat> that's our biggest problem is um, doubling our response time by having to go up there get it and bring it back down to the water is the plan to purchase and use <coughs> roof trusses yes to rest on top of the containers and and then go with a metal roof um that's correct right now they're they're still yeah, collecting plan. quotes but uh, it looks like Middleton lumber is coming out with the best pricing on that um, but again that's going to be the association's money Any other discussion? And you're not planning on putting any electrical or electric or anything in? Nope. The side. only this the only thing we're planning solution. for electricity is putting a solar panel up to keep the batteries charged. Right. Just that. Yep. Um, the other plan is I don't if you've noticed the fence has come down um, between our training area and recreations park area. The plan is to replace that as well. Just to to keep that separation. And these are going to get painted up so they look a little better than they do right now. Make a motion we approve the temporary um, structure to house the airboat as presented. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Aye. Chief. Thank Number you. six. Alton Housing for the elderly annual payment in lieu of taxes. This is our yearly vote on the elderly housing. Make a motion that we accept the payment in lieu of taxes for the elderly housing, the amount of four thousand two forty-eight eleven. Motion is made. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Do we know how many of the uh, apartments up there actually have elderly? Yeah, not many. Well, I think it's more, it's not just elderly now as it is elderly and disabled. Right. Right. Disabled. Mm -hmm. Disabled in Section 8, right? Don't elderly in Section 8 I just go don't together. think there's any children. I right. think it's just adults only. Or low income if you want. I, I yeah. want to call it low income. Yeah. But I know there's always a waiting list, Phil. That's all I can tell you to get yeah. in. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, moving on to old business. Police Department, higher education policy. Chief. You can hear me. So uh, I'm back up here again tonight to discuss the proposal that we originally started discussing back at the end of 2019. Um, you know, there was some concerns and some questions, and I know the board wanted to get some answers to a few of their questions and explore things a little bit further. Um, if you'd like, I can go back through the whole entire proposal for you again uh, or answer any questions. Um, really, I, my intent tonight was to come back to see where uh, there was a couple of different discussions just to refresh your memory the first time that we talked about this um, this was originally brought to me in 2018 at the time we already had commitments in place with other employees um, it wasn't something that I could bring forward 
2019, there was one of those commitments had fallen through. There was funding available. That's why I brought it forward in 2019 on behalf of the SRO. Uh, she is the one that made the request to me, and I am therefore bringing it to you folks as well. Um, after that, um, the first conversation we had, there was some discussion about a partial payment and maybe not supporting the whole program, but a partial portion of it. Um, when we came, when we reconvened after that conversation at a later meeting, there was only three board members here. There was discussion about reviewing the entire policy and what the board's intent was moving forward with that particular policy in the personnel manual. Uh, and we had some discussion about that, but again, we felt it was better to come back and revisit again with a full board. Um, so everybody could, you know, either ask their questions or share their opinion on which direction the board chooses to go with this in the future or for this particular request. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to go through all the details of it. I just didn't want to, uh, you know, waste all the time of discussion by going back through with it if you're familiar and fresh with the request. Just to, just to set the record straight, sure. what I brought up that evening was that <clears throat> I thought we had to proceed cautiously mm -hmm. because the reading of what's in the uh, policy book doesn't say anything about degrees. It talks about a course here and a course there. Sure. We've since heard from the town attorney who sort of, sort of, you know, similarly said the same thing. Okay. Uh, and pointed out that the job description itself only requires a high school diploma. Correct. Okay. The point I was trying to make is I wasn't saying change the policy. Some people got up that night and thought that's what I wanted to do. I didn't say I was just clarifying what the policy was and suggesting that we, we proceed with caution. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's no, the way I read No, I remember that conversation the same way that you just articulated as far as raising that question as to whether we specifically talked that night about degrees versus just individual courses and things. And the discussion kind of went in the direction of, um, I know that you guys wanted clarification on, you know, the reading, and I, I know there was talk about talking to town council as well, um, but also the, the issue of, you know, courses, that's fine, we can pay for course at a time and go for a course. The only difference is it makes it difficult when the town, this is, when we've revisited this with other options before, it's been about a commitment on the part of the employee, and I guess when we go to individual classes and we're submitting one class and paying for a class, we're not really in a position where that's going to, you know, a five-year commitment's really going to be um, a fair request or an acceptable request, you know, for one course. Um, so that's where, um, you know, my intent uh, with this policy or the intent I got from, you know, years ago when we exercised this policy was it was a retention tool for employees to build on our employees. And yes, you're exactly right when, uh, I mean, to be a law enforcement officer in New Hampshire and to go to the academy, you only need a high school diploma or a GED um, to be certified, um, you know. But part of this was building on and taking stock in our staff and the, the, the town's employees and retaining them here. Uh, Mr. Howard uh, made a comment in his opening remarks that I agree with wholeheartedly. You know, a degree is something that is an investment, and you can use that as an investment in yourself to market. And that's what I think the town was also recognizing is that when people do take that investment in themselves without the commitment or the backing of the town, they can market that same degree to other departments. Hiring police officers right now, police, police being a police officer is not a very popular career field right now. It just isn't in this day and age with what's going on. Um, so I, I do know that it, you know it, it isn't. She's making that leap and that investment in herself, but it's also going to be worth a lot more to other agencies too. Um, so it was more of a chance to be able to um, support her and her pursuits um, with what it would bring to her position, which is uniquely to the SRO position, um, more so than it is to the patrolman, uh, but also getting a commitment on the other end uh, for the town so that, you know, that, that experience and knowledge is going to be used here in town and not necessarily be shopped out to the highest bidder. I, think um, I do question how possible it is to hold somebody to that five-year commitment, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I, there's been, I, I've raised that question with other agencies and other associations, police associations. I do know that there has been some success, but there's also been equal failures in enforcing contracts. Those contracts are all worded differently. They all have different clauses. Um, like most legal documents, it's hard to get a clear sense of, yes, they're all enforceable, or no, they're not all enforceable. It's all in how they're, rid, uh, they're written um, and enforced and what the practices are of the town or the community and what those contracts actually are for, whether they're for training, whether they're for um, you know, uh, new hire contracts for the academy. They all have different languages and different um, stipulations on how they're paid out. And so, so there, there are some ways that it is enforceable. You can actually write it as a term loan. Mm -hmm. And if the agreement is that they stay for five years, you forgive 20% of the loan each year. Mm -hmm. If they leave employment, it becomes a legal promissory note to the town of Alton. Oh, I've never seen it done that way before, you but that. that's, that's, that makes a lot of sense. The other, I think we have two other issues. Um, one is that clearly the job description does not match what we actually look for mm -hmm. in a person. Because I know of no school in this country that would take a, a high school graduate or somebody with a GED and put them in there with a gun um, or expect them to to counsel and, and talk with a child um, without having gone through specialized SRO training. Mm -hmm. um, the other issue I think we have is that we have a an education policy that is very broad. It is not well defined. It is not. Um, it, it doesn't spell out well. Mm -hmm what we're willing to do and what we're not willing to do for our employees. I'm a huge proponent of education for employees. I think that um, it's a benefit that um, most workplaces do offer these days. But I also think that there it has to be in a responsibly and, and with some sort of a limitation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't think that we can send the chief um, of the fire department there um, to medical school because it will benefit the ambulance service. I don't think that's a fair request to the taxpayers. Absolutely. Um, so I think that we just need to better define what our policies are. And a $40,000 master's degree for one person, which could fund the certification of so many people, and we have a shortage of police officers, that's where I'm kind of having a personal struggle. Okay. Um, I think we have more work to do in general around our education policy and what we want to see and how we enforce that payback period before we can say yay or nay to any of it. The other Personally. thing, um, just along those lines and just throwing that out there uh, from other jurisdictions, other areas, things like that, something the board might want to consider too is the one thing we've never had in lieu of educational is for <coughs> Um, an uh, educational stipend for people that have already, that when they achieve their degree, because it's an incentive for them to go, but there are some jurisdictions that have a um, stipend or paying incentive for higher degrees earned. It's not usually drastic, but th that's just something that when you mention that about other, um, is that's just another way that it's looked at. Instead of paying for the education, they're rewarding it after the fact. Um, there are other avenues actually to uh, get education uh, in the child advocacy advocacy center um, for lakes region victims or witness um, coordinators throughout the, um, the the county and attorneys and the county attorneys and the county attorney office there's other ways of getting um, higher education with the department um, seeing that it's hard for me as a selectman to approve with the town's tax paying money to uh, send someone to school that their degree for the RSO is, is really high school educated or equivalent for a position that um, that is already in the school with counselors guidance counselors and private sector people that are in, in the area mm -hmm. um, so it's hard for me to say okay this is going to be totally beneficial for the town's people to have this one officer 
in the, as, as our RSO. So that's why I struggle with that. No, I definitely understand it. You know, like I said, this is a request on behalf of the employee. I support the request because I want to see my employees and I want to see the town's employees better themselves, strive to be the best that they can be. And if the town's willing to support that and they can support that financially or even a portion thereof, um, I think it's a strong incentive for employees. I'm all about employee retention because I have been around when this place, uh, when I say this place, the town of, unfortunately, different agencies became breeding grounds, training grounds. And we were spending thousands and thousands of dollars because it takes about forty thousand dollars to outfit and send somebody through the academy and and pay the money for training and stuff to get them certified um, you know keeping them was a, was a big value we've addressed a lot of retention issues with pay scale over years and different other incentives this was just one more employee retention tool uh, that we've used over the years um, but I completely understand the different perspectives and, and uh, positions that you folks are in um, trying to make the decision on that so um, I think too something I won't be here but for the board to consider is that many um, employers have a maximum per year per employee that they will do yes. um, and so that may be a way to assist her in in obtaining this um, most employers for five thousand dollars per year max and it's a reimbursement program where you have to have a certain grade point average sure um, and Hearing you say that it costs forty thousand dollars to train and, and get a new officer up and running, I actually solidifies the point for me that we have a shortage of police officers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see every town in in the state when they lose one, they're advertising no experience needed, come go through us. Is that at this point in time the best use for us mm -hmm. for that? For that training money um important yes absolutely mm -hmm. i totally agree with what she wants to do and what she's doing and it's an important position well, sure yes uh, where we've got it in the policy that we pay for courses mm -hmm. should we stipend her towards the courses not pay at all i think <clears throat> what you know, sydney's I mean, saying we need to re you know, we got to get back into this after we know what the new I mean, board's going to be. That's in. part of their benefit package is to be able to go to school. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have to pay at all, but we can help her a little bit and say, yes, we're going to help you a little bit until we figure this out because it is part of your benefits. Because right now we can only go by what the policy book says, and it says courses. So. Well, she could that's submit for a course. course. She yeah. could submit for a course yeah. reimbursement. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. She stipend or reimburse it or whatever for a course or two courses whatever because it is in the policy because mm -hmm. i'm sure any help will uh, absolutely help greatly. I, absolutely I point to i agree with all of you what you said um it's been kind of nice actually i wasn't here for that meeting when it was three two i was in missouri so when i came back it got brought up meetings got canceled so it gave me even more time to review plus it also gave me time to go back to a few folks that went to college went back over some of the courses with them looking at it doing the electives of certain things that are required but might not be specific to the job and number nine of the job description of the resource officer says mentor students particularly those demonstrating at-risk behaviors there are courses in this program here that would help to um, look for those at-risk behaviors uh, other than sure. what the normal person might not see Mm -hmm. yeah. So I do believe there's courses in here the town could benefit from, the police department, possibly that the other officers could be taught from this officer. I do not believe in the paying for the whole cost of the um, program uh, because this came to us as a program, not as just courses. Um, I myself have always leaned that <clears throat> if you get everything for free, you don't appreciate what you get. Um, I'm also of the opinion of, of an employer paying for education, which I have at my store for my accounts manager um, to get more into CPA. I'm paying up to a third of that education. There was a cap on it each year. It could only be so much each year because I couldn't allow them to go to college all the time like that. Because I also figured between doing courses and doing work, somebody's going to get tired after a certain amount right. of hours every week. I think one is our policy has to be looked at. I think the job descriptions of the RSO officer has to be looked at a little more carefully than what's there. Um, I realize you only need a 
high school education. But as Sydney said, I don't know many schools that would let somebody just come in with a high school education or GED no. and carry a gun in their school unless they didn't have the proper training. I don't know many parents that would want them in but there. Right. It was hoping that we normally will see officers go in for more of a law degree, some sort of enforcement law degree. Um, which was over in Henniker, wasn't it? Uh, Hillsboro, they had a college over there that taught that for a while for law enforcement or criminal justice. Yeah, there's a bunch of, there, there a lot of local schools that... But there was a small college over there justice. that did it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there's some courses in there. I believe that would benefit our mm -hmm. community and its citizens and its children. Sure. I mean, primarily this is the whole pro, this is the whole thing we're talking about is the children of the school. Mm-hmm which I think there is. So I think maybe go back and the selectmen need to look at the policy along with the, you as the department head and the town administrator and just define what we should pay for and what we should not pay for. And that, but I think the degree, the whole degree program, I think is out of the question, the program. Okay. No, but I think we could stipend or, or pay for but I think, some of the courses. But I think the individual, the SRO officer, needs to say these are the courses, or the chief says these are the courses that will best benefit mm -hmm. SO officer in that position and sure. these are the courses I'd like to have paid for whether it's one this year or two this year and maybe two next year so that's my feeling I don't know how the rest of you feel <coughs> well, I think I'm totally in favor of that I, I think that, no, um, I agree with that I think if Kristen could come back with a proposal for you know basically what you know what you did what what mm -hmm. Todd did yeah. Yeah. you know when he was when you guys were taking your courses, sure. you know, here's the here correlation is. between the, right. the content to right. the job and everything and else. There's be training also out there that you folks can go to to for this that you can learn from. Can you get any college credits for when you go to some of these other? Some these some things will transfer over and can transfer over when you get to this higher level. Not really as much um, at the master's level. Um, bachelor's is a little bit more. Um, you know, and there's are, there are other specialty trainings like you were talking about with, like, but um, you know, the only thing that that lacks with that is when you're sending an officer to school during like um, to one of the, whether it's the academy, a specialty school. You know, you're most of them are no more than a few days to 40 hours. Um, these are just the, you know, this is obviously a lot more in depth content and requirement. I mean, and there's a lot more interaction normally. When we go to school, there's very few law enforcement schools where you're actually, you know, you're writing papers, you're writing essays, you're doing uh, stuff. It's more lecture style, mm -hmm. and uh, there's it, there's just a, a little, a lot more substance um, in in this avenue. Um, but there are good training courses out there that we do take Quite advantage of. Region, yeah. yeah, that we do take advantage of um, for sure to build our officers and. Uh, you know, we will continue to do so. And in the job description, um, I definitely understand what you, you're pointing out as far as, you know, ideally what we look for. And every time we post a job, we always say that, you know, we always put out requirements and then we put preferred. Preferred either military, you know, sometimes we substitute college degrees for military service. Okay. Are, that's what uh, most, a lot of the larger agencies do, is either a two-year degree or, or military service, things of that nature. Um, you know, we set those minimal requirements because that's what it takes to get in the academy. But we're always striving and we're always searching for people that already have that, at least that associates criminal justice degree, you know, some active duty military service or, or something that correlates um, to build a foundation. Now, if you talk to the school to see if they'll pay a little bit of it. I mean, it better it favors them. Mm -hmm. So I have not yet. I, I will. I, 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 I think they have to go ahead and put that out and see what they have to say about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. There so. was only <coughs> okay, uh, there was only one other thing that was brought to my attention uh, by someone, and I was a little surprised. Um, the Alton Central School had a suicide um, seminar, prevention seminar, mm -hmm. this past December 11th. And it was mandatory to all employees, right, f for everyone in the in the school. And, and it, was, it was a two-hour seminar. It was put on by Laurie Eckbert. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised that, that, that no RSO officer was present during that. And that was something that was brought to my attention. And that was a very, it was mandatory for, for the employees of the school, of course. Uh, but it was important. I would think that that would have been something our RSO officer would have headed off and been head of is a suicide prevention and actually been involved. And I was surprised to hear that no one was there. I'm a little surprised about that too because um, 
I, I got to confirm for sure, but I think they were part of some of that course content, Kristen was, because um, I know she has a specific, passion is a wrong word to use for that, but it's, it's very near and dear to her heart, that topic, mm -hmm. and um, she's dealt with it quite a bit. Um, Unfortunately, attendance was requi so. required by the school. Mm -hmm. She may have got the day off, had to work overtime. Well, <coughs> but it's well, but the only thing is, we have to remember the RSO officer works for the board of selectmen, not for the right. school. Well, but I know that, I, and that's what I was pointing out. But I mean, the only one that it's really something very, very near and dear mm -hmm. and very important to the police department. The only one that works for prevention. the school as the RSO officer is the one that actually works for in the elementary school because they actually pay for it for part of the year, correct? No. That's what you no. told us when we hired no. no, 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 they pay, yeah. but they don't work for them. They, well, they are employed by the police department. They work for the police department, but also then it's not one school paying for it. They both pay. They, they split it 50%. Well, I look at but it. the money is the right. I look at it this way. If I'm paying a salary to somebody, even though I know they work for the police department, if I'm having a meeting, I request that they be there. They should be there because it's their dollars that are paying for that individual to be there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> but yeah, if you could check in that for that for Paul, that would be great. Sure, That's sure, be happy to look into it. All right, so you Thank folks you. all set with this yeah. request that the SRO officer bring back the request for certain courses? Yes. And I think we need to revisit the policy in we the will, future yeah. to clarify the it. this coming year. Maybe compare it to what okay. the private sector does and things like that. Sydney brought up the five thousand dollar limit. You know, we should look into those things. And looking into, I think, in, uh, as far as your department, looking into some of the Lakes Region, what they offer on some of the programs as well. Mm -hmm. That's more of a service, not as much as it is training. But I will, uh, I will definitely uh, poke around a little bit more on that. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks. Okay, at this time, we'll move on to selectmen's reports. Paul? Uh, nothing to add at this time. Bill? Nothing. Sydney? Virgil? Meeting ain't for two weeks. A week, two weeks. Okay. The only thing I'll bring up is the cyanobacteria public hearing with the EPA that night. Um, we did go down to it. I was quite surprised that there wasn't as many folks from our communities down there because of the devastating effect that a cyanobacteria can have on our community, especially after we've advertised it, we've talked about it, publicized it. I was hoping more would show up. It was amazing to see one gentleman from Bristol show up who has a property on Welch's Island in Guilford and, and had his concerns. Um, but I think it's really something I don't think much got accomplished that night at the public hearing with the EPA. I think they've kind of had their minds made up that they're going to allow the fish hatchery to put through the amount of water they want to. Um, so hopefully in the near future that this fish and game will do the right thing and put in the septic system that needs to be done for the sewage from the fish. Um, but that's all that I have at this point for a selectman's report. So at this time, move on to town administrator's report. Okay. Uh, I have three items to bring to your attention. The first is that our town assessor, um, Deb Derrick, has submitted her retirement notice her last day of employment will be April 10th and we have uh, begun advertising uh, the second item I wanted to bring to your attention was that next week for the voting on Tuesday on the 10th um, polls are open 7 to 7 and you all will be needed to be there or at least one at a time you know as you can schedule it like you did mm -hmm. last month. That's the plan. Okay. <coughs> All right. Uh, and then the third item I wanted to bring up was um, some handouts at a training meeting I went to this past Friday in Laconia. It was hosted by Belknap County, actually the county administrator. It was the monthly Lakes Region Municipal Managers Group. And she had a couple of handouts, which I put at your um, seats, which were very interesting on the, um, the county budget for 2019, the county budget for 2020, and a breakdown of the different uh, municipalities in the county. It's just for informational purposes only, just for you. I thought it would be interesting that you did receive that. And that's all I have um, under TA report for open session. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Move on to approval of minutes, February 3rd, 2020. Regular minutes. Motion to approve February 3rd, 
public session as presented. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 February 3rd, 2020, non-public. Motion to approve the February 3rd, 2020, non-public session minutes, divulging none. Second. Um, number one should be. You might be, I was just going to say, you might okay be able now? to release number one. Yeah, that would, I guess, be my recommendation. Okay. Motion to approve February 3rd, 2020, non-public session minutes, divulging item one. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 February 4th, regular. Motion to approve is presented. Second. Sir. Motion been made and second. Do I have any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. February 10th, 2020 workshop. Motion to approve the February 10th, 2020 workshop. Second. Motion made and second to approve the February 10th, 2020 workshop minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain? Abstain. Aye. Sorry. Okay, the next would be the consent agenda that you have in front of you. Can motion we approve the consent agenda as presented? Second. Motion made to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, at this time I'd like to open up the floor to public input, limited to five minutes per person on any government town business. <coughs> oh, just a minute, Bob. Bob, just a minute. Mr. Markland's coming up. John Marklin, just a quick suggestion. You were talking about zoning articles earlier. Uh, neighboring town, just for uh, informational purposes, used to have the planning director attend the deliberative session um, and have a, like a table set up with the zoning articles on boards. Uh, so when people came to the deliberative session that people could ask questions of the planning director right there, get, get the information. And I always thought that was very informative for anybody who had questions about zoning articles. So. Didn't know if that might be another way of possibly getting that information out in future proceedings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Holt. Yes, uh, reference the uh, police department higher education policy. Uh, I, I missed the meeting that that was first brought up at. What was the figure that was asked for? Would you do, say that again? I didn't hear your first part. The fig I missed. I guess you brought this. Uh, this has been talked about before at a selectman's meeting. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. Uh, you said that you weren't here. You were out of town. The one on which which one? I'm, I'm talking about the higher education policy on the police that department. Was back, back, it was back in, in November, December when I was in yep, Missouri, yep. yes. Okay, I missed that meeting myself. Uh, what was the price tag? I, price I think tag at the same time was the same amount that is being presented. What you say tonight, 40? 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, and the individual has spent $13,000 so far through Stafford loans. Has the town reimbursed any of that? No. no. Nothing, okay. has been re nothing has been reimbursed at this point. Uh, you know, I'm in favor of education, but we have to, I think you have to get a, really define your policy, your personnel policy, on what it should cover, the amount, and so forth. Uh, because you, this can get repetitious. You have a lot of departments in this town, and uh, it could get kind of expensive in the long run. Uh, it's pretty hard to grant somebody something and not somebody else, if if you know what I mean. So, but I think you're going in the right direction. Uh, just one other thing. Uh, uh, I've attended quite a few meetings in the last couple of years. Uh, there was two chairmen here. 
Cindy and Ruben, and uh, both of you, I think, have done a good job. And Cindy, you handled me pretty good uh, over the years. And uh, uh, but I'd like to really sincerely thank you for. Your, I believe you had three terms. Yes. Yeah, for three terms of service, it's a uh, it's a tough job, and. Uh, uh, I also appreciate what all the rest of you do, too. But good luck to you, Cindy, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holt. Any further public input? Mr. Howard. Raymond Howard, stuck with Jacona Road. Um, I just want to go back to... Uh, comment that was made during the discussion of the education funding. Uh, there was a comment made about doing a loan that would be paid back. Well, I think uh, you need to look at the Constitution, Part 2nd, Form of Government, and Article 5. I don't have it with me, so I don't know the exact wording, but there are prohibitions on loaning private entities money or investing in private entities. <coughs> Um, even though it's an employee, there's a fine line there about setting some kind of a policy in place where you loan an employee money. So just make sure you you have the lawyer look at that aspect of it too if you redo the policy. Thank you. Any further public input at this time? Good evening, everyone. Pat O'Brien, Frank C. Gilman Highway. Um, first of all, Ms. Shapley, I can't say um, thank you enough. I think you've brought a level of expertise to the board um, in a business background that's really brought this town uh, a long way. Um, I do appreciate the amount of time that you have spent here, and uh, I wish you all the best in enjoying some free time moving forward, and I hope we see you again. Thank you, Pat. Um, so a couple things I'd like to bring up. Uh, at the last meeting, I, I kind of offered some advice about, you know, maybe changing up the bid process a little bit to kind of be more appealing. Um, I hope we do provide some consideration for that uh, to get some more outreach. Uh, the next thing is we really need to try and get the younger people into government. And I realize that's probably not new. There was probably somebody 50 years ago saying the same exact thing that I am now. Um, but there are things in place like social media, for instance, um, that does engage people. And sometimes it does get sticky because people are the quoted phrase keyboard warriors um, that are maybe a little more interested in saying things over type than they would be in person. However, if we keep that um, kind of non confrontational approach and we're just posting information um, like most of the departments currently do I really think that's that's a great way to get out um, another thing that that offers and again municipalities are probably I don't know five ten years behind the business world another thing that that offers is statistics you can see who you're reaching you could potentially pay for ads to reach specific groups of people um, not that we would want to target any one specific group, but for instance, um, some of the posts from the fire department, police department, parks and recreation, they're attracting five to 6,000 views um, with up to 150, 300,000 views on some particular ones. I'd go out on a limb to say that's more than our town website gets in the course of an entire year. You're probably right. So. I do think that's a good road to start traveling down. Um, another thing, when we look at the town election page, there's nobody that's applied or put it, their name in the ring for budget committee. Um, so I'm hopeful that maybe over the next few years we can try to start incorporating that on more of an official town level basis uh, to just get the word out. Um, the next, the snowmobile club. Um, I, I'm obviously on the snowmobile club. Honestly, I work more for the snowmobile club than I get to go out and play on my own. Work, volunteer, really. Um, there's a lot of, not special interests, but smaller interests that the town supports. 
they're not asking for money. They're just asking for access here and there and some cooperation along the way. So I really hope we consider that. Um, this, this talk time and time again about trying to get young people out, get people out of the house to do something. Um, so I'd hate to see us start restricting that. I'd, I'd like to see um, the town to continue to support that venture. Uh, other than that, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ben. <coughs> Come the way, I do have a question for you, for you though. When you graduated from high school, you were 18. You and Ralph were on the fire department. <laughs> sure. You want to get involved. Why didn't you get involved in more government back then when you were 18, 19, and 20? Honestly, because I didn't think I was qualified. Okay. So that's what you need to teach out. Maybe you can reach out to the high school and the elementary schools to tell them that. Sorry to bring up when you were 18. Again. Kelly? Uh, Kelly Sullivan. <laughs> Just listening to everybody speak, and uh, Mr. Marklin came up and made the suggestion about maybe posting the zoning up at the deliberative, and I think that's a good idea. I went to the deliberative session in hopes that I would hear discussion on the zoning, and because I had missed that meeting. So I was disappointed that it wasn't discussed at the deliberative session, so I just kind of liked that idea. And you understood why it wasn't discussed, though, correct? Yes. Okay. I did. All right. Just wanted to make sure of that. Yes. Why it wasn't discussed. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any further public input? Okay. At this time, I will close public input. And there are no discretionary requests for appointments. So I'd like to make a motion to go on to RSA 91-A, colon 3, paragraph 2, A, C, and E. I'll pull the board. Paul? Yes. Yes. Sydney? Yes. 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 Ruben, yes. Five minute recess.